So Ilam Party, are you excited to go to Chess Base yes. office? Yes, very much. What is the most exciting thing for you? Meeting Miller. Kashmir Miller. Yes. And learning end games. Yeah. I think this way. Yeah, yeah, this way. Hello, Kasten. How are you? Fine, thank you. And then, then I want to give you. Okay. Because the uh, Engine Manual you already have. Yeah, of course. Yes. The Engine you already have. I... No, but he has fourth edition. Ah, okay. Yesterday in the apartment we were looking at fifth edition. Ah. There was one copy, and then we read your foreword. Comics forward. Uh, no, but you had written one so, uh, uh, where you had said these are the changes made and uh, all of that. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Like the grey marking and all. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I found, yeah, yeah, I uh, there were some, yeah, yeah. I was especially. What do you think? Where we found the most um, com from fourth to fifth edition? In which sections you think we found the most mistakes? With computer, of course, and 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 and, and Alex and so. What do you think? Look in game, I see. Because yeah, that was the obvious, this okay. was the obvious answer, and this is also right. But there is one less. Of, yeah, this is the correct. This <laughs> you. This was not so difficult to guess because it's the biggest section, and you we we know that it's very deep and so on. Um, that's right. But there was one one surprise. So this was I was expecting, and I already knew some mistakes in advance. So this was not so difficult to guess. But uh, but one uh, one there was one surprising. Um, Surprising uh, section where we also found many mis surprisingly many mistakes, but this is difficult to guess. In a way, no, it should be Queen Endgame. Uh, Queen Endgame. No. no, 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 no. Night Endgames. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, Night Endgames. We found many mis, especially this woman, this Ninsovich. Uh, this is very uh, yeah, man, everything wrong. <laughs> In the old, uh, amazing. Ah, this game where the outside part. Yeah, 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 yeah. The old analysis, everything's about. <laughs> Even I, what, yeah, I, yeah. And the fine position is still, um, fine position is still um, open to this day in a way. If if mm. finds right on, he's probably right. But it's night and games also are very. Uh, the nights are so so tricky, so tricky uh, that. Um, okay, so um, you uh, yeah studied. Um, the Boretsky's Endgame Manual, uh, uh, Endgame is of course good, and um, so I uh, suggest, uh, can we look at, uh, if you agree, at the player types model, or? Yes, we can do it. Okay. Do you have you already seen it? It's also in the, in the, in the show by, by um, Zaga. Which uh, there's a model by Lars Bohansen, published in 2005. It's not so popular yet, but I think it's a bit underestimated. Uh, four player types, um, activists, uh, theorists, um, reflectors, and um, pragmatics. No, I don't know. Okay, so it might be interesting, of course, to... Okay, what do you think? Which of the 16 world champions are activists, so attacking active players? Kasparov? Yeah. Alecki? Yeah. Tal is yeah, the only yeah. hyperactivist. Tal is the only hyperactivist. Spaß gerne an. Yeah. Other players are Shirov, Morozovic, Tobolov, Pillsbury, Andersen, Bronstein, Larsen, Timonov, Ironia, and Judith Polga, and me. Okay, I don't belong in the list, but. <laughs> and then Tal Neshmedinov. What are strengths of activists? Intuitive play? Yes, that's correct. And the array. Attacking. The array attacking chance is relatively high, material low. Hyper activist is very. Um, yeah, this is even mm. like the young Tal. There are typical quotes like their correct sacrifices and mine. Only a hyperactivist can say this. No other player type would say this. Okay, they have a good feeling for initiative dynamics and are often right, often often willing to take statical weaknesses. Um, um, yeah, this can of course also be a weakness when, when the initiative peters out and, and the weaknesses remain. But 
It's like Tal against Kurt Schnoy, for example. Mm. Yeah, their weaknesses, they often make weakening pawn moves. When I was young, I, I'm a typical activist. When I, when I was young, I often castled short and played g4 and, and lost because the knight f4 mate was coming later. And, uh, yeah. They overestimate their own attack, a king attack, and underestimate the opponent's attack. They are not so good on defense when the defense cannot be played actively. When rook and dame defense can be played actively, I had many good examples. But when I had strategic or passive positions, I had to defend them, then, yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. And they are, they are very sharply defined. They uh, are very sharply defined play type. So if you understand this very well, then you can score very well against the activists. And if you don't, then the, the uh, Timon of and Larsen both lost 6-0. So they, the hyperactivists especially, they often have long series from wins and losses without draws. Because they can't make a draw. The pawns can't move backwards. If you go here, then you mate, or well, you lose, but you... In a way, you can't draw with such yeah. stuff. Okay, it's not a, to play for a draw is not so good anyway, but but okay. But of course, it's not. Yeah, they are often willing to take risks. They are often willing to play for three results. Also, not all players are willing to do it, but they are often willing to to go uh, very high risks. Yeah. And yeah, what, what could you look at? Uh, cards and Arnand would be problems. How to play against them? World Championship match cards and Arnand. You could look at where yeah, Reflector, Magnus Carlsen, Outgunt, Vichy, or um, Kramnik, Kasparov, where Kramnik played the Berlin Wall and Kasparov keep banging his head against the wall. And But without Queen's dynamics were, there was not so much dynamics. Kasparov couldn't show what he can do when he uh, is really... Okay, then, yeah. Let's look a bit at uh, chess, but win c4, knight f3, uh, g3, bishop g2, castling, uh, uh, d4, yeah, uh, d, d, it doesn't matter here, d4, um, knight c3, castling short, E4, yeah, it's like a typical King's Indian here, which was, yeah. Um, C6, H3, D6, D, yeah, maybe here as a. I yeah. think I've seen this game. Ah, yeah, you, uh, you know, okay. We, um, mm -hmm. I, then we only, yeah, yeah, this, this one, the book, of course, contains mostly this one of the criticisms, but. We look at it through the lens of the four player types model, and okay. this is not um, in our books. Um, 91, 93, rugby 1, bishop e3, queen e2. So um, here, um, it's okay, you, usually you should be black, but it's okay that you're looking from the white point, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, White is slightly better, yeah. White has more space, stable position. Um, the black's minor pieces are a bit odd, especially in knight h5 and bishop g7 are a bit odd. Computer also gives plus whatever 0.44. Okay, what are black candidate moves? F5. Yeah, but that of course is very. Um, It's a hyperactivist move, but probably it's too, you know, um, it's playing it too early. I take on f5, and then, yeah, and I, and I have to eat, it's always, um, giving the square is always a bit, you know, uh, very, um, yeah. and you didn't win much dynamics. Okay, f5 was one candidate, it's a natural lover in the position, but it's, and, and we want to play it, but it might be, and especially after rook c1, one thing is, white is threatening g4, and we don't have... Yeah, uh, right after this, we can go g4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we were playing for two results, and it wouldn't be a good choice in the botvinnik tal game. If you play against a such strong theorist like Botvinnik, you, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to go there. Okay, other candidate moves? 
Rook C4. Rook yeah, yeah, this is of course what Tal played. Mm -hmm. It's objectively not good, but typical hyperactivist move. You, you hyperactivist says we activate everybody, then we sacrifice everything, and then we win or lose, depending on cake resulting <laughs> chaos. But objectively, it's of course bad. Okay, more best computer move, by the way, is this, but this shows that the computer has no clue. You, this, under the circumstances, would be a very, very bad move. Tal was not so good mm -hmm. at endgames, and like, playing this against bot winning is like almost like I resign. Yes. Okay, there's one candidate move which uh, might be a good acceptable compromise, which has some hyperactivist flavor and is not so, not so, it's not like f5 or queen c4, not so verpflichtend, not so. Another candidate move might be. B5. Yeah, very good. This sacrifices the square, mm -hmm. but compared to you, this is a very, very relatively small. For hyperactivists, this is like <laughs> sacrificing nothing. Yeah, this is the second computer move. And this probably Tal should have played. Yeah, and here comes another big moment. What should, yeah, if you play against these active players or highly activist players, these moments are often very, very important. When you allow them to strike, you must be sure that you can control the things. And what when it couldn't. On a good day, you can control it, but it will get, yeah, very sharp. Then you have to show it. Yeah. But it doesn't make but it doesn't make sense to go there. The computer also what is best for white here? Not should but winning have done. I'm thinking of bishop f4. Yeah, very good. This is second best move. Very good. It's also one of my students suggested this. As given in here. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah, Bishop F1 I like. Even better is if Bishop F1 is the second move and the first move is. But Bishop F1 is good. If you play Bishop F1, it's better than Bonvinix move. Uh, the computer thinks that even better is first. Eight. Yeah, and one, one after Queen A5 then Bishop F1. And after A3, Queen B3, Bishop takes A7, B6, and. Queen E3. Or queen c2, yeah? But queen yeah. F, but a queen e3, rook d4, or, or rook c5. Rook c5, rook c5. Yeah, yeah. So better as queen c2, yeah? Queen c2 is much easier. Yeah, yeah. Then it's directly over. Yeah. He played this. This is playable, but um, you shouldn't. You are asking for it. Now comes what you wanted, because now we are more active, you know, we have more, he can't play rook c1, we have to play rook a1, okay. this is not so active. Yeah, now comes one of the most famous moves of chess history, Ob yeah, objectively it's losing by force, but it was nevertheless, it I think it shows why for human point of view it makes sense to, to have these, I think one reason why chess is so interesting is that we have different player types. There are games like tic-tac-toe or four win or four in a row or whatever, where we basically have only one player type, the pragmatic, and but they are not so interesting for humans. One reason is we only have one player type. We only have we have an algorithmic solution. And uh, these games are, are not bad, but they are not as popular as chess, and I think one of this is one reason. Yeah. Chess has these strategical player types. Yeah. The, the non-pragmatic, non-activist player types. Yeah, you are right. And now um, yeah, but now, of course, to refute it, White has to find a series of only moves and what Winnick did. Yeah, if, if, it, if to refute it, must be Bishop takes a7, yeah? A, 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 a3, a3, queen b3, bishop a3. takes a7. Yeah, a3, queen b3, bishop takes a7, bishop e5, f3, b6. And now comes the refutation. But I think it was only found by Kosparov in the computer times. It wasn't even found later. So when you play King H2, you must, you know, why, why it was not, why your move Bishop F1 is better than King H2. <laughs> but as we are now talking about it, uh, which watches the refutation in that moment? Uh, the only winning move for white in that moment is found by Kasparov.
came simply in IIT April. IIT April. And then tread the rooks. Or black this rooks see too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's a bit. Night A2 is a bit. Um, Night A2 is a bit. Too passive. Passive, yeah. Rook C2 looks very, very. Uh, Rook C2 looks very dangerous, very dangerous. And even if you, you know, it's like, yeah, this is when you play against these hyper activists, when you allow this activity to, to grow, then you can also easily lose because even if you have an extra piece, it might not matter with the bishop G2, the bishop A7, the knight A2, you have one extra man, but it doesn't matter because you are scattered all over the place. But I don't want to criticize you as, as mankind didn't find, <laughs> find it for decades. A knight A2 is too passive. Yeah. Even, even if it would be playable for the moment, I, w- I, would, be, I would be happy with black despite the, extra, the, the rook C2 and what can happen there. I'm so active. Right? Yeah. So here A3, Queen B3, Bishop takes A7, Bishop E5, or just play Bishop F3, right? F3. Oh. A, A3, Queen B3, Bishop takes uh, A7, Bishop E5, uh, F3, F3 B6. B6, and now the only winning move is... You can now find it because you have all this additional information which the uh, mm-hmm. old masters didn't have. And you already can guess that Knight A2 is wrong. Yeah, but Knight A2 also doesn't feel right in a way. Yeah, it's... Even if it would preserve the material, this is not the main what it's about at the position. I'm sure of one. No, but we can we can start to guess why they didn't find it. Bishop f1, uh, rook um, four to c7. Ah, this looks. Yeah, and white can of course easily lose in this set. So. so black wants to play rook four c seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can play rook e one or rook d one. Mm-hmm. If rook four c seven, then I can go knight d four. Yeah, but again, the thing is maybe even, maybe even then, rook, uh, rook c2. Yeah, it's... That is too passive. Rook c2. I have to play queen f4. Yeah. It's not correct. Uh, yeah. I'm so active, then you, you have to find that something more active. Yeah, this might be another reason why but Vedic didn't go here and didn't find it and so on and so on. It's like he now needs in a way an active solution. Yeah, he doesn't need he needs a he now has to switch gear to activist now. And this is not so it's not so yeah. Easy. Yeah, it's easier for you now. Uh, of course you nowadays players are more universal usually because especially world class players. Then this player type is Magnus Carlsen, for example, is very universal, of course. Has elements of all types definitely. The young Tal was very sharply hyperactivist, but nowadays you won't become world champion by this is only, this is very fundamental. You need to be more, yeah, you, you know, flexible. you need to be more flexible, more universal. You can't always sacrifice everything in any, every game. It, it won't work against the strong opponents. Okay, it's not so, it's, it's not so easy. I don't criticize you at all, but you have to be more active. You think more actively. Play queen f2. Bishop d4. Bishop d4. Then queen h4. Queen h4. But I don't have a threat. Rook c, yeah, rook c, rook 4 to c7. You don't threaten anything. And here I can play knight b5. Ah, I can just take on c1 then. Yeah, rook takes c1. Okay, we don't want to make a signs out of it, and I want to, yeah, I want to also introduce other player types to you um, more actively, more pieces to the to the to the front, more options. Mm-hmm. 
But we can maybe understand why it was so difficult to find. A4. Yeah, A4 is the only A4 winning. A4 is the only winning move. And then A, A5 is the idea. And after uh, A4, Queen, uh, um, after E4, Rook uh, 4 to C7, we have uh, Queen um, B5. B5. And this. And then you take it to go. Yeah, and then matters are decided. Yeah, right. Okay, I, I am um, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't have an English copy anymore. Can, could you work with a German book or? Yeah, I can do yeah, that. Yeah. I unfortunately didn't have a, an English copy any, mm. anymore. But its uh, notation is figurine anyway. Mm. And this means why to move and win. And okay. Weiss is white and win, gewinnt is win. Okay. German and English are fortunately the rest. You can. German and English are fortunately relatively... Um, yeah. Same. Yeah, they have the part of the same original language. Mm. Yeah, they are not completely the same, of course, but yeah. And Dutch, by the way, is a mixture between German and English. But don't tell them. Don't tell them in one English. They know already. No, don't don't tell them. Yeah, they are they are situated between the German and the English. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So here are you could solve the exercises for the mm. This by the way is one of my favorites, but my all-time favorite tar. It's, it's mind-blowing. But then we look at the topics and this game you already know. And mm. I know. Okay, but let's look at a few more player types. Um, and here are, for example, rook, active rook and game defenses by activists. Mm. And then how to play against activists. We could look if we had more time. But it... If you know how to play well against these activists, it helps a lot for you. you will act, I think activists are the most common player type. Zoya is an activist pass, for example. Zoya Ganguly of India is a clear activist player, for example. But a good example. Yeah. Fortunately for me, Zaga invited him as guest. This was very easy. They often make weakening pawn moves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even Kasparov had several such examples. I, of course, also contributed to these wrong pawn moves. And then there, you can look if you had Polgar Arnold is a very good example how you did beat Vichy by not allowing anything, but just strategically uh, play a game. Or Tivyakov Arnold is also a very good example. This position, now after b6, it's a dream position. Black is an activist, and after b6, no activity. This is a dream position against an activist. A Vichy Anand is, of course, also a clear activist. Mm. Yeah, from this. It's clear. Yeah. Not as radical as Zoya, but still he's an activist. Mm. Okay, so this is game we would, if we had more time, which is not the case, we, of course, could look at it, how to beat an uh, activist. Uh, Tifakov yeah, played a strategically clear technical game and won very convincing convincingly by here king f2 and then just fixing the weaknesses bring the pawn to h5 the rook to g6 and then yeah then it must collapse yeah. so beating the and, 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 and Vichy has no activity whatsoever yeah. this is the, uh, the nightmare dream of an acti activist yeah, I know from my own experience I could also have chosen my examples but Vichy is yeah, whatever Okay, next we look at our theorists. Um, three, yeah, theorists should be overrepresented among the chess trainers and authors because theorists want to give their theories to, to other players. Yeah. And so, what are the three theorist world champions? The first one, yeah, Steinitz, Steinitz. Bodvinek, and Kramnik. Kramnik. Yeah. They could also be called dogma dogmatics or yeah. Other players are Tara, Schnemsovich, my system. Only a theorist can write a book, my system. Peter Leko, Arnish Giri, George Meyer, Ulf uh, German pronounced Georg Meyer, Ulf Anderson, Nikola Zetlak, Sergei Tifjakov, Ruslan Ponomayov, Hans Berliner. Here's even a written a book, The System. This is even one level higher. Not my system, but the system. The only correct system. Okay, it doesn't exist, I know. But <laughs> as theorists, you must believe in your theories, of course. Otherwise, you can. Uh, Josef Dorfmann, the method, the method in chess. Alexander Bangiev, square strategy of squares. Lars Bohansen. Yeah. 
Okay, they, um, yeah, they, are, they uh, know their openings usually very well. They, sometimes they have a very general theory. Often they have the theory starting from the openings and their structures. They know their structures inside out. Mm. Their French, for example, is a typical theorist opening. All openings which put the structure very sharply defined are potentially typical theorist openings. Okay. Because, and here it's, it, this is, of course, all no exact science. You can't. <laughs> This is psychology and some, you know, it's no, it's, it's not mathematics, it's mm. not, it's more like the rook belongs behind the pass pawn, but when it's wrong, then you don't go behind the pass pawn. It's more like that. Mm. So you don't take it literally. It's also not like we put you into one box and fix you with inside. It's more like it could open for you more or new perspectives to look at mm. things. And it depends on, you can also, for, if you think it's not so useful, you can't forget about it. I'm not married to the moment. It's just like, it's usually you have strategists and strategists and tactical players, which would be activists and pragmatics as practical uh, tactical players and strategists as reflectors and theorists. But I wouldn't write a book, want to write a book with, with only two types. With four types, I have more, you know, to play on. To, to it, 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 it is more complex, but it has also much higher explanatory power. It's a typical model from psychology, by the way. So, but... If you don't believe in it, I'm f you are fine with mm. with me. It's, I'm not. It's different from the end games. Uh, they are, you know, if the table base says we win and you say no, then I, we can't we can't go on. While here, if you say this model doesn't, then it doesn't. Because when this is one of the secrets of chess, there are not a lot of these guidelines, models, whatever, and they are more or less bad. It's what you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chess is a very clear, relatively concrete game, and it depends what you can make out of the guidelines and models, whatever. This is what you should find for yourself. This is, I think, one of the reasons why chess is so interesting that you can, if you work with different trainers, you will, or you well, probably already know, that they all have their different approaches. And this wouldn't be in mathematics. If you one plus one, you there wouldn't be much difference. Yeah. Only maybe how to teach it, but <laughs> basically it would not be other than whatever. The theory of Pythagoras or whatever. But here in chess, uh, it's it's a concrete game after all. But for us humans, we need some theory, some guideline to guide us. Mm. We can't live by calculation alone because there are too many variations. Yes. And we don't know what to... If you don't know what to calculate, then you... Mm. And sometimes there are positions where you just don't calculate, but you, you just play because you must... Mm. Okay, so uh, yeah, theorists know their structures inside out, they know all maneuvers and plans, they know it from opening, middle game, and sometimes even in end games. French players even know their French end games, they know where they know. They, yeah. they have play all played already hundreds of games. And typical openings are Berlin Wall, French, Queen's Gambit exchange variations for this mi minority attack, or what Venix Pawn, Roller, F3, E4, or Four Nox French, or London System, or Stonewall. Stonewall is also typical. Oh, nice. see. Whenever you have this big structure, you mm. have um, potentially a serious opening. It, of course, doesn't mean that everybody who plays it is a serious. You can also learn from the others and copy from them, of course. Mm. You can look at whatever Setlux games in the London system or his book and then play the London system and you are an activist. Here. There's no problem with it. Yes. it. It could even be a good approach, of, of course. So it's just it's, it's just a guideline for typical serious opening looked at through the lens of where we get sharply defined structures. Marochi structures from the Accelerate Dragon or Tilfjakov place. And then as serious, it also makes a lot of sense to play your structures with both colors. Mm. Marochi captures or whatever you can play with both colors with, 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 the, with the E4C4 or against it or with, with E4C4 with white or with E5C4 with black. You can, you know, yeah? mm. This is a typical serious approach to Things, then you can use your knowledge inside out in all directions of your knowledge. Okay. But you, yeah, you, in your, you are of course still very young, so you probably have, um, of course, development potential. Mm. Yeah. But I think it's not like you can choose your style as ever you like. If you are not a hyper activist, then maybe the tile style is, you won't go there because you would lose too many ego points by sacrificing the queen in the same <laughs> move in every game. And, um, and uh, yeah, you, you, you have some choice and you can be more universal, but of course you, you are still one, a human. You are not completely free in your choice. Yeah. Okay. 
so yeah, how to play against theorists? You shouldn't play into their strengths. You shouldn't play their openings. You and they are, of course, theorists. Are not, one weakness is they are not very flexible. They believe in their theories, theories, and if, but they don't understand that the theories uh, have only a limited area of applicability. And if it doesn't apply, then yeah, they have problem. And. Um, yeah, one example is a match uh, Kramnik against uh, Vichy against Kramnik, where Vichy won by these Miran openings, where Kramnik couldn't use the knowledge of the structure, had to make a dynamic sharp fight from the beginning, and Vichy showed how to, one example, how to beat a strong theorist like Kramnik. Okay, yeah. Then, yeah. Of course, Anderson is also, uh, Anderson style, we could look. It's also a master series, Ponomayo, Kramnik. Yeah, these, these kind of power play positions you shouldn't give to series. Yes. You, should, you should give to no opponent, but especially <laughs> not to... You, of course, shouldn't give to any opponent, but... <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay, then uh, next comes reflectors. Who are the... Yeah, reflectors should be, uh, by my feeling, um, the less common play a time and so, so it depends a bit on how the model will catch on I think it depends a bit on the reflector term the other three terms are used uh, they are not maybe used to the lens of the model or by the, but active player or activist or attacking player is used anyway by everybody theorist or theory or whatever is also used not maybe in this sense but it's used yes. and um, pragmatic is also used mm. but reflector not so, and I can't, of course, guarantee that the model, I, I understand that Hansen published it in 2005, and I also understand that it didn't catch on, but I think that the fault is not with the model, there is some other reasons why it. Mm. But okay, I, it, but it also doesn't matter. It, if, if it helps you, uh, it's great, and if not, you just forget about it. <laughs> yeah, and you, you don't think in this one, yeah. It's like in chess, you have to, you have to find out what is the main ingredient of the position and it's the same here in a way and you if you play even if you play against a hyperactivist and he can sacrifice a queen incorrectly it may happen or may not happen you can, shouldn't focus too strongly on it mm -hmm. you must find the right balance of course mm -hmm. in like in, it can help yeah but i think especially against the, if you play against activists that can help a bit if you understand how they how they tick yeah how they how they work. If you, because I know the activists also have a very often are very unstable. So I, I can I could play when I actually played a 2,800 performance in the right position against if I make the right selections, or I could also play a 2,400 performance, mm. depending on my opponents. What and if I can show my strengths, or if they manage to out, if they manage to to make a dry technical start, strategical position, and yeah, now yeah. If my pawn moves are strong or weakening, yeah, or my pass pawn, if it's a... Okay, um, the five Reflector World Champions. Okay, Magnus Carlsen, we already saw. Mm -hmm. Keva Blanka, Smyslov, Petrosian, Karpov. Mm -hmm. Karpov, I think, is the most Reflector, Reflector Champion. This is why we chose Karpov as role model. Mm -hmm. Magnus, of course, is Reflector, but he's very universal. He's also a much stronger activist player than me, but he's a much, 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 much stronger Reflector than me. Mm -hmm. We don't have to discuss uh, that anymore. But he's a reflector, and I think this is one of the reasons why he has so much more ego than the next one, because um, the, when Lewis and I wrote a book, then, um, uh, then you can see the, the top 10 in that moment. With this. Mm -hmm. Magnus, only a reflector, then came the pragmatics and activists, and Adish, the only series. So this is uh, would be two to eight, one to four, from yes. concrete to strategical players. Mm -hmm. And for man this is taken for managers. For managers, um, there were for chess it hasn't been investigated deeply. For man business managers, it uh, should be one to three. Mm -hmm. And so we are one. We have, but we have chosen the top ten to a certain moment. We have one to four. So in chess, I guess it should be similar. Mm -hmm. Why should it be different? And but, but for the world champions, amazingly, it would be one to one. Yeah. But of course, this is a selection effect that we only show 16 humans, 16 world champions. And, mm. and if you are a strong, the reason might be, if you are a strong, very strong reflector, you are very likely to become world champion. 
if, if, yeah, if there are no other reflectors because yeah, the others can these cap of these cap of games they felt like they lost but they didn't know why yeah. Yeah. because cap of played his reflector mm. chess and the if you are if you don't have this feeling you don't get it mm. okay and, and I think also so um, Michael Adams Akiba Rubinstein Vincent Keimer Cla um, Alpha Zero and Lira Lira Zero and I think these neural network engines are uh, reflectors like they mm. learn by mo playing against themselves and have then a database of motives. Yes. Well, alpha beta engines are pragmatic, of course. They only they only calculate and have a serious aspect with the evaluation function. Mm. But basically, they are pragmatic. Yeah. Well, I think the neural network engines are reflectors. Mm. See, yeah. So they have a very deep understanding of the game. They uh, look at the relevant patterns that everybody, nobody else can see. They have a fine feeling for harmony and coordination of pieces. They can talk to the pieces and have an absolute hearing for their answers and that you have or don't. The strongest active prophylaxis and domination and restriction strategies. They are very strong in the question of right exchange and collecting small advantages. They are very strong in strategical endgames. This is was Kramnik Kasparov match. Yes. They have a good feeling for positional sacrifices like long term exchange sacrifices. I have also sacrifice exchanges, but mostly for direct king attack. Petrosian's exchange sacrifices are completely different. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, couldn't do them in a way because. Okay, the weaknesses, they may often have two weaknesses. They are not so good in concrete cal calculation, but Magnus is an exception, of course. It's very, but Karpov, for example, Kasparov was much stronger. Nevertheless, Karpov was leading five to zero. So. Because he had, he was so restricted that he could only move backwards, and then there was nothing to calculate. <laughs> so, but but yeah, but Karp Kasparov was much better in calculation than than uh, Karpov. So one weakness of reflectors is often that they are not so good in concrete calculations, and often they are not so good in the openings. This is the reason why they have like um, they often have strong theorists as um, as seconds. If for the, the whole Soviet, the half of the Soviet Union worked for Karpov, we don't have to go there. But uh, Magnus took Peter Heine Nielsen as chief second. Mm. Very strong theorist, very good choice. Mm. Vincent took Peter Leko, very strong theorist, very good choice as chief second, I mm. think. Mm. Yeah, so a very strong theorist, of course, good seconds often. Mm. They know their openings inside out, so you can learn that. They are well organized, they know how to, yeah, how to work. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, then there is this, we could look at if we had time, this, probably you know already, this fantastic cup of Spassky. It all looks so easy, yeah? Yes. Here Anatoly played the, one of the most famous moves of chess history, mm -hmm. why to move? Maybe. But you knew it, yeah? Yes. Yeah, when you see it, you immediately understand. But this difference is well, probably for Anatoly, it is the first candidate. For me, it would be, yeah, maybe I can find it if... <laughs> yeah. I'm an activist, after all. I don't have this. Yeah, then... You could um, solve, of course, the extra sizes, depending on what we yeah. That you can't solve in the This is also one of the most famous, one of the most famous positions of chess history. White has many ways to make a draw, but what did, Spas uh, what did T. Grant Fatanovich Petrosian against Spassky play here with White? Oh, I haven't seen this game. Ah, okay. Rook C5 seems very natural. Rook C5. Yeah, but after all, you are not going anywhere. Yeah. King f6, king e5, king d6, c5, and so on. Who is not playing? What is the main thing here? Who of the white forces is not playing? How to play active prophylaxis directly? So king is not playing. And how to bring the king into the game by violent means? G4. H takes g4, king g3. Yes. King you go. But I helped you a bit. Is otherwise one of the things. It's not. It's not the, the computer. Unfortunately, spoils it that White can also play h3 or whatever. But, but from human point of view, Petrosian solution g4 h takes king g3 looks most most human. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is correct according to computer. So. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's. And there are here these why I think why alpha zero one against stockfish is that stockfish couldn't calculate as deep. Alpha zero had the had the. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Here, for example, is here rook h3 is a typical reflector move. Knight f6 would win as well. I think uh, uh, the stockfish would have played a, a knight f6, f6 check. check. It's a pragmatical win. Mm -hmm. And the, the alpha 0 played rook h3. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to 
This whole yeah. game, three, you don't have to calculate. You're just winning. You don't calculate mm-hmm. anything. There's nine of six. You must be sure that you're gonna yeah. gonna home. And, yeah, okay, the computer of course can can do it, but we are only humans after mm-hmm. all. Yeah, this is also sad. Adams Gulot, why to move and win? Only winning move by a what did Vicky play? And here this white seed and Gewin just means white to move and win. Uh-huh. So Gewin means wins and wise is white. Uh-huh. So it's not rocket science. And yeah. Only winning move for white is what did reflect reflector. But Mickey also has this thing. Mickey is for his strengths not so good in calculation. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, he is he has a feeling and so on and so on. But when it comes to concrete lines, he is for a 2700 player, yeah, well, what, he's stronger than me, but still not so strong compared to, to Prague or Gukesh or you name it. Yeah, what is the only winning move for White? What is it? You have some reflector qualities as well. So reflector qualities are also not so. The train them is not. The train is activist quality, like here, is okay. easier. Well, to train tactical exercise or whatever is easier. To train these reflector qualities is more difficult. Okay, here. Yeah, here it's supposed to be. Yeah, here it's the knight is dominated and we dominated by force, but mm-hmm. they see it already 20 moves in advance. That the knight <laughs> will be, you know, yeah, like yeah. cup of games. He, yeah. Yeah, he is also famous carp of game in Hamburg played, yeah? Knight. And I will. Ah, you will know. Yeah, you will know many things already, but... But okay. Yeah, okay, and finally, uh, Pragmatics. There we have the, what are the three remaining world, world champions? The three the Pragmatic World Champions. Laske. Yeah, he's a... He, he's a... She, he's a Chief Master Pragmatic, yes? Yeah, Im- Emanuel Laske. Max Oeuvre and, and Bobby Fish. Bobby would never sacrifice material when he is not in a way sure in his view that it's correct. An activist would say, and Tal would say, is this correct? Not correct? Who cares? We go. Okay, we lose, but it. Who cares? Bobby would never play it. And, and here he couldn't play because he, it is losing. He can't play it because it loses by force. Okay, he doesn't know, but he never says, you guess. Yeah, he is not Okay, pragmatics are very concrete. They can uh, calculate very sharp and so on. They seldomly make um, uh, uh, make sh- big mistakes. They yeah, calculate variations. Alpha beta engines are the chief pragmatics. Only the evaluation function. But if you would give only a material evaluation function and the good alpha beta engine, you would already have a very strong master pragmatic. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, the end engines would beat. That one. The engine would calculate many, many more lines, but it would be beaten by the neural networks pattern yeah. recognition. Yeah. yeah. So chess has this both. Yeah, this, I think, is what makes chess um, interesting compared to. Mm. And we don't have thousands of things we have. Yeah. This you probably already know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, this, okay, you may know many things, but. Um, <laughs> Well, but uh, I want to explain the and Lewis and I wanted to explain the model and not um, not bring new the most newest things uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and some exercises with calculations. Yeah. So yeah, it. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that you forgive me that it wasn't too much chess and that the book is in German. But uh, okay. Yeah, it was a great pleasure to meet you and to have a show with you. Thank you. And yeah. The model uh, you shall not over 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 value or over yeah. But you think it might be helpful or yeah, it might be helpful. I I think it is still a bit undervalued and one reason is that the Soviet sources don't give it. Mm-hmm. If Turetsky won't have, would have given it, it would be different. Mm-hmm. But Orgard found only a, I can't find it in Turetsky's books. But if I could find it, it would be different. You, it's uh, you know, you guess. Okay. okay then, um, yeah. Unfortunately, I we could have made, of course, but unfortunately, I don't have time anymore. Okay. But I pass you on to Pascal for for mm. the chess base um, chess base um, video recordings. Okay. okay. Yeah. So great. And if you come again or whatever, we can. 
But I think everything went very well, mm. especially our mm. show and session. Yeah. And I didn't have any English copies at the. This, of course, also exists in English, but I didn't have at home. Any. Yeah, it's not a problem. I can just see the questions. Yeah. In the, it's in Purine, and mm. it's German and English are very similar. And um, Weiss zieht und gewinnt means white to move and win. So it's, it's for, no. what for black? Like, this is Schwarz. Black, right? Schwarz, Schwarz, yeah, Schwarz oh, okay. is black. Okay, this is a diff German and English are similar, but of course uh, not. <laughs> Not, uh, uh, yeah, Schwarz is black. Okay. But otherwise, you can also use Google Translate or or you will. This white, uh, Schwarz and Weiss, uh, yeah, it would be better too, but the, the publishing house doesn't have, yeah, this here they have, they, they make it like this. Yeah. Mm. The publishing house doesn't have such things for the diagrams, but okay, but okay, I can you, are intelli you are an intelligent, very intelligent boy. I think you, you, will, you will do it. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so yeah, I pass you on to um, uh, Pascal okay, for further chess based recording. I wish you all the well best. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I had a choice, and I hope I already guessed that you know Dwetsky's endgame manual array. Mm -hmm. This is why I uh, choose the player types model. And okay. in one hour, we can do the player types model in this, but we couldn't do endgame COB in one hour. Mm -hmm. You guessed it. Yeah. But we made one hour endgame magic. So. Okay. Okay, so many thanks, uh, and I wish you all the best. Okay, thank you so much. I'll leave now. Okay, thank you. Thank you.